We're here in beautiful Suzhou, China, and today we are coming down here to check out the loquats, which are in season. And we wanted to take a grand tour in their new GT car, the Netta GT. We have with us an American iconic GT, the Ford Mustang. We're gonna take them out and give you a comparison. From the Netta GT's styling, it's very clear to see that it is a sporty, if not even a sports car. The bonnet here really is reminiscent of a Lotus or maybe the early 2000s Corvette Stingray. Give you the idea of being a true GT, but this is just the idea of, because the wheels are located quite close to the cabin and the ride height is fairly high, a little bit too high to really truly be considered a sports car. But it is quite sporty and at its price point, I really like it, it is styled really, really well and I think it is an exceptionally beautiful car. I am really excited to be in a Ford Mustang. It has been one of my favorite cars ever since I was young. One of my favorites, the 1968 Mustang, I think is the iconic muscle car look. Really a truly beautiful car. And I'm very excited to be driving it in China, to be traveling around and getting to explore one of the most beautiful cities in China, Suzhou, which is around one of China's largest lakes, which is called Taihu and this lake is absolutely beautiful. But one of the reasons that the Ford Mustang is so iconic in American history and is so beloved by people um, in America is because the Ford Mustang has just an absolutely amazing history. And that history starts with Ford versus Ferrari. Carroll Shelby uh, helped engineer a Ford GT40 that not only competed with Ferrari, but was able to beat them. And a little bit of controversy around the race, but regardless, Ferrari did not win. And Ford came out of that looking spectacular. So Shelby uh, off the right racetrack due to heart problems, comes back to America, takes that drivetrain, puts it in the uh, Shelby GT500, and boom, you have an instant classic, um, the Mustang Shelby, one of the highest selling um, American muscle cars in the world. So the reason that the American Grand Tour is a little bit different than the European Grand Tour is our Grand Tour cars, our GT cars, tend to be bigger, tend to be a little bit more muscly, while the European GT cars tend to be slimmed down, look a lot more like sports cars, have more like that James Bond, um, DB11, DB6 feel to them. Now, the Netta GT is made by Hosen Auto, which is a uh, automaker out of Zhejiang, um, which has a long history of making cars out of that region. This is a region in southern China that's known for its manufacturing prowess and capacity. So this is a place that has a ton of people with tons of experience, tons of, uh, you know, just a long history of manufacturing in that region of the country. And there is still to this day a ton of manufacturing coming out of that. The Netta GT has that GT Grand Tour uh, label in it. And that's something that I think really colors the way I see this car because I wanted to get in it thinking, okay, we've got a GT coming out of China. This is gonna be a really exciting thing to drive. And to be honest, I'm, a, I'm just a little bit let down on the, the excitement of driving what should be a very sporty car that does not really deliver in that category. And that is the only place that I feel like this car does not deliver as well as it could. So as you're steering this car, you, you get this feeling of you're catching up to your wheels because the suspension is too soft. And I think that disappointment there really makes the GT label feel more like marketing than it feels like, like you're getting that product. And I guess one thing I wanna compare this to is when you're driving a Mustang, even the base models of Mustang have that this could have been or could be a race car feel. Uh, you know, your, your, your steering is one-to-one -one ratio, your acceleration, you, you feel the, the throttle a lot more, you get a lot of accuracy in the braking and the acceleration. Where the GT label comes from, comes from racing. And a lot of the GT cars have cars that are in racing series. Netta does not have cars that are in racing series. 
And I think that that really comes out in the car as you're driving it, that you can realize that there is not this rich history of racing and engineering that they're putting into the car. So maybe someday that'll change, maybe someday that'll get fixed and the cars coming out of China will have that. One can only hope. NetaGT's price range in China is located about the same place as Ford Mustangs is in America. That's the small engine models of the Ford Mustang, not of course the GT500 or other high-end models. There are currently four versions of the NetaGT. There is the 560 Lite, which starts at 178,800, all the way up to the 580 all-wheel drive, 460 horsepower, which will run you 226,800 RMB which is around 32,800 USD. Today we have the 580 all-wheel drive, 460 horsepower version that runs you about 226,800 RMB or 32,800 USD. The overall design of the Netta GT is one that I really, really enjoyed. The color matching and the overall feel. The plastic dash in the middle is definitely something I could do without. It kind of looks like a 1980 shatter pattern. Um, so that really wasn't thrilling, but overall the colors and the feel look really good. If you're looking for something that has a luxury feel without the luxury price tag, this is absolutely fitting that need. There's a crystal button in the middle console that will change your driving mode and give you a zero to 60 launch if you hold it down for a couple of seconds. In the backseat of the Netta GT, the space here is not that bad, it's not uncomfortable, but if there was a tall driver, there would be zero leg space for my legs or the driver would just simply have to be uncomfortable. Getting out of the GT is not too bad, but the back seat is definitely not where this thing shines. It is small and it is not easy to get in and get out for anyone that is my size. The seat adjusts automatically back and forth, um, not having a manual option there, a little bit inconvenient, but the electronic movement moves fairly quickly and is convenient. So what are our likes and dislikes for the Netta GT? The first thing I have to say I love about this car is the price point for what you are getting. So the things that I like about this car are the way that it looks and of course the level of luxury you get out of the car. But at that price point, those two things absolutely shine. This car turns heads while you're driving. But one of the things that I didn't like about it also has to do with that sporty price tag and that sporty ness. So one of the things that I didn't like was the overall unfinished feel of it. There are sensors in the car that don't exactly point to where you should be going. And the window buttons are really, they're kind of the push haptic buttons. I really didn't like the way those feel and they're a little bit difficult to get the window exactly where you want it to go. But those things are definitely things that I like about it and things that I don't like. The Netta GT is probably one of my favorite cars I have ever driven at this price point. And I am really, really happy to say that it has been an absolute joy to drive through the winding streets and the beautiful streets of Suzhou. Now, the one thing I will say about the GT aspect of the car is, GT is a long, long, long history of using it for marketing purposes, using it to describe a Gran Turismo car, a car that has just an absolutely fantastic driving experience. With that GT label, there are other cars that I think about like the DB11, like the Mercedes 300 of the 19, 300 SL of the 1950s and 60s. And that GT label really brings a high standard because of the years of history that it has. Now, those brands, particularly other GT cars, have cars that have engineering teams behind them that have been racing for years and years and years, have drivers that have put their lives on the lines doing exceedingly difficult races. And this car doesn't have that. And so that really raises the expectation and raises the bar to use that GT on this car. And so something about driving that really kind of made me want to step away from that GT label and just kind of be a little bit more objective about the car. Objectively, the car does a really good job, particularly at the price point that it is. 